Hey mathematicians, today our lesson is going to be on decimals on a number line. Our tech is 4.2h decimals on a number line to determine the corresponding decimal to the tenths or hundredths place of a specified point on a number line. Let's go ahead and read our learning goal together. Today I am learning how to read decimals on a number line so I can communicate large and small numbers effectively. I'll know I have it when I can find the whole number values on a number line. I can determine if a decimal is in the tenths or hundredths place. I can determine if a number line is split into tenths or hundredths. I can determine the distance between the tick marks on a number line. So our real world connection. Why do you need to know about number lines? Knowing how to read a number line will help you with many everyday tasks. One task being how to read a thermometer. You will need this skill for science and also so you know whether to wear a bathing suit or a winter coat outside today. Another skill you will use a lot is reading a ruler or meter stick. These measurement devices help us measure how long or high things are. They are broken into whole and parts of a number. When you begin driving, you'll notice that cars have these funny things called speedometers to track how fast or slow your car is moving. Speedometers are real world number lines that you will use every day. Measuring cups are also uh, used number lines. You will need this especially if you enjoy baking or doing science experiments at home. A wrong measurement can have costly effects. Let's review our vocabulary before we get started on our mini lesson. Remember, a digit is any numeral from zero to nine. Place is the position of a digit in a number. Value is how much a digit is worth. Whole numbers are numbers that have no fractions or decimal parts. A decimal number shows a value smaller than one represented as digits to the right of the decimal point. Number lines are lines on which numbers are marked at specific intervals. All right, let's get started on our mini lesson. Decimals can be represented on a number line as a distance from a whole number. When reading or plotting decimals on a number line, the first thing we want to determine is where the whole number is. Then we want to determine if our decimal is in the tenths or hundredths place. We do this by reading place values. When a decimal is written to the tenths place or is represented with a tenths grid, we use a number line that is broken into tenths. So if you notice, all the tick marks are written in decimal form going to the tenths place. So I start at zero, here's one of my whole numbers, and one is another whole number, and then from zero to one, there are 10 spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So that's like if I were to take a whole candy bar and break it apart into 10 pieces, it's the same thing with the number line. I'm taking that one whole and breaking it into 10 parts to represent tenths. So if you notice that this one tenth in decimal form, two tenths, three tenths correspond to the tick marks. So one jump equals one tenth, two jumps is two tenths, three jumps is three tenths. A tenths number line will have 10 parts in between every whole number. This number line starts at zero and goes to one and has 10 intervals or tick marks representing each tenth. You'll notice that for each tick mark you move to the right, the digit in the tenths place increases by one tenth. So just like our normal counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, our number line will follow that same pattern, but because we're working in tenths and not whole numbers, we would say one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths. When a decimal is written to the hundredths place or is represented with a hundredths grid, we use a number line broken into hundredths. 
Notice all of the tick marks are written in decimal form going to the hundredths place. So this is 10 hundredths, 20 hundredths, 30 hundredths. A hundredths number line will have a hundred parts in between every whole number. This number line starts at zero and goes to one and has 100 intervals or tick marks representing each hundredth. So I can count from zero to 10 hundredths and in between there will be 10 parts, 10 small tick marks. One, two, three, four, five hundredths, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hundredths. You'll notice that for each tick mark you move to the right, the digit in the hundredths place increases by one hundredth. So I wanna go ahead and zoom in to our hundredths number line so you can see what's going on here. So I'm gonna zoom in in between 30 hundredths and 40 hundredths. So when I zoom in there, notice that my number line now starts at 30 hundredths and ends at 40 hundredths. I no longer have any whole numbers on this number line. And in between 30 hundredths and 40 hundredths, there are 10 parts. So when I'm breaking a tenth into 10 more parts, I get hundredths. You may also notice that the tenths line up for both the tenths and hundredths number lines. This is not a coincidence. Both of these number lines represent tenths, but when we break each tenth into 10 smaller parts, we get hundredths. So if I take this one tenth from zero to one tenth, and I wanna break that into 10 smaller parts, it's going to look like this on our hundredths number line. So I take this one tenth, break it into 10 smaller parts, and now I have 10 small tick marks in between my number line, but my one tenth and 10 hundredths still equal the same value. So it's like if I had one dime or 10 pennies, they still are the same amount of money. Same thing for our number line. One tenth and 10 hundredths are equivalent. So let's do an example. Let's plot three tenths on the number line. So we wanna start at zero and count over three tenths or three tick marks to find three tenths. So knowing your decimal place values is very important when plotting or reading a number line. So I know that this digit three is in the tenths place and I don't have anything in the hundredths place. So when I'm plotting on my number line, I wanna make sure that I'm looking at tenths, not hundredths. So I'm gonna start at zero. I notice that my number line is counting in tenths because all my digits are in the tenths place. And then I'm just gonna count over three times. One, two, three, and I'm gonna plot my point right there on three tenths. Next, let's plot the decimal 0 0.3 on the number line. We're going to start at zero and count over 30 hundredths or 30 tick marks, or we can count by tenths and count over three big tick marks. So if you'll notice on my hundredths number line, I have some tick marks that are a little bit longer than my other tick marks. These long tick marks are representing tenths. So I know that three tenths and three hundredths is the same value, right? If I have three dimes or 30 pennies, it's the same amount of money. So I could count over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifteen, sixty, seven, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. I could count over thirty hundredths, or because I know that these long tick marks are tenths, and these little bit shorter, we'll call them medium tick marks, those are the halfway points. So each one of those ticks is going to represent five and my small tick marks represent one. So because I know that these large ones are tenths, I could count by tens. 10, 20, 30, hundredths, or one, two, three, tenths, and they're the same value. Next, let's plot the decimal 0 0.27. So because I know my decimal place values, I know that this seven is in the hundredths place, so that means I'm going to need to use a hundredths number line. 
So we're going to start at zero and count over 27 tick marks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 hundredths. Or because I know that these large tick marks are tenths, the medium tick marks are fives, and the little tick marks are ones, I could count out two tenths, so two big tick marks, one two tenths or twenty hundredths, then I could count out either seven small tick marks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or I could count twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. All right, let's do a check for understanding. If a decimal is represented by a tenths grid, what kind of number line will be used to plot the decimal? Go ahead and pause the video and get your answer we would use a tenths number line. If a decimal is represented by a hundredths grid, what kind of number line will be used to plot the decimal? Go ahead and pause the video and get your answer. We would use a hundredths number line. When plotting decimals on a number line, where do you start? Go ahead and pause the video and get your answer we find our whole numbers first. This helps us know if we're working in tenths, hundreds, or do we have any whole numbers? In this example, we don't have any whole numbers, but there will be some number lines where we do have a whole number and we need to record that. All right, guys, great lesson today. I will see you for our guided practice.